I'm going to uh, talk about building a sex positive India. So, uh, well, uh, what is sex positivity? I would like to st first start from, you know, uh, understanding what sex positivity is. Now, sex positivity can mean different to different things to different people. Commonly, people think uh, is that, okay, being sex positive means that, you know, you have the uh, liberty or you have the agency to uh, exercise your sexuality the way you like, which is, of course, a very important parameter when it comes to uh, you know, being a sex positive person that to be able to have your own agency, which is you can determine your uh, sexual orientation, you can determine your gender, uh, you can determine who you want to fall in love with, you can, you can decide when you want to have sex, with whom you want to have sex and how you want to have sex. All of that, of course, comes in sex positivity. Having said that, sex positivity also goes beyond these uh, decisions is uh, having a, you know, uh, a philosophy about my sexuality that how, what is, what is my sexuality? Uh, how do I define my sexuality for myself? That is being called as a sex positive person because I know myself sexually. Now, sexually doesn't mean just a set of mechanical acts. Sexuality, as I just said, that is a philosophy which determines everything that we do, everything that we think, and, uh, you know, everything we want. And you might say, oh, how sexuality is related to food or how sexuality is related to career. And I'm going to give you an example. So it is, it is proven that food and sex uh, stimulate similar hormones. Okay, uh, a good chocolate and an orgasm give, gives the same kind of a result because they actually, you know, release happy hormones, which is endorphins and serotonin. So, so is the stress release, like having a good chocolate, uh, having a bar of chocolate can lower down the stress and so does the orgasm. So food and sex is related. Now, career, well, it is seen in my own practice that people who are sexually inhibited, you know, even in the workspace, uh, there is something that just stops them. So you may have endless leadership programs, you may have leadership development programs, but if the person attending those programs is still sexually uh, shy or sexually inhibited or even worse, sex negative, that is not going to make them the leader they want to be because if you are not, uh, you know, in touch with your own sexuality, if you're disconnected with your sexuality, if you think that sexuality is something that you do in the room, you know, shed your clothes in something and then just uh, get dressed and pretend that nothing has happened in that dark room. That is not sexuality. So this is where inclusion of conversations on sexuality is so, so necessary in uh, mainstream, uh, you know, mainstream platforms like this. So being a sex positive person means to be able to understand one's sexuality and to be able to exercise that sexuality, whatever it means to the person. Now, building a sex positive India where we talk about a society, well, this momentum has just, uh, you know, kind of grown uh, uh, in, in terms of certain corners, like we can talk of them as elite corners, like in a metropolitan city or in a college, but has this conversation really seeped into families? Our families, which is the basically the unit of the society, you need to see family as a fundamental unit of the society. Has this conversation really happening in families, which is means you know uh, parents and kids, or husband and wife, or family members, or even workplaces, which is not really. Um, I won't. Uh, I can definitely say with uh, a lot of certainty that it has certainly not been mainstream, although it has initiated. So to build a sex positive India, we need to talk about sex in our families. Now, that is very, very intimidating. Like, okay, how can I talk about sex in my own family? Well, I uh, I've given a TED talk on this and there are a lot of conversation starters, but think, but before talking about sex to make India sex positive, uh, let's understand that, you know, uh, what is the consequence of not being a sex positive? What are the repercussions of not being a sex positive? And sexual crimes are something that, you know, that comes just like this is we are not talking here about well-being like i'm not really starting with well-being like it is about enhancement of life but i'm saying that what is it it can curb and that includes sexual crimes which is uh of course we all know that rapes and sexual assaults are something that have always got a 
limelight, uh, be it the Hyderabad rape or be it the Hathras or be it the Nirbhaya, which is definitely or Asifa and so many, you know, so many sexual crimes. That is something, but there is much, much more than that. There are many, many um, incidences which is just happening. You might say, oh, the rape is something which has happened just maybe, you know, say 3,000 cases of rape. Although that's, that's just even saying a random number, every rape counts. But there is more to it. There is more to it, which is right now happening in our own families. Like we don't know. So let me just bring your attention to those issues which are not still addressed. Porn addiction. Uh, being a sexuality coach, I uh, I never, when I started out, I never thought that this is something that uh, is so rampant in Indian society. Be it youngsters who are preparing for their cat or who are preparing for even their engineering entrance. They say that, okay, we our families are economically weaker. We are their only hope and they are stuck in the trap of porn. What started as a stress coping mechanism has grown into a full-blown addiction. And neither there are experts qualified who talk about sex because, again, the sex is not just a stigma for general population, but even from the medical community or even the teachers or, you know, the experts who you really want to take the help from. So there is a lot, uh, there is a lack of access even in terms of uh, seeking help and seeking interventions. So that that leaves them with no option. Even if they want to do something about it, there is no one to look, reach out for. They can't discuss in their families that I am addicted to porn. You can still say for a moment that I'm addicted to smoke or I'm addicted to alcohol or I'm addicted to food. Like food addiction is so common. We talk about comfort food. Like, you know, I, I hear stories where they say, oh, we have, we just kind of uh, had this uh, burger or pizza when we are stressed. No one minds that. But everyone would mind if I say, oh, you know what? I just watched that porn film because I was stressed. That is the stigma that you have attached to sex versus vis-a-vis other kind of addictions. And that makes it even more complicated and difficult to, you know, seek help because there's so much of shame, stigma and secrecy. So I think uh, I would like to quote Dr. Benny Brown here. She, uh, she is the, you know, she's a tech speaker. And she said that if you put shame in a petri dish, you need silence, secrecy, and judgment to create a culture of shame. Like, you know, we uh, being a science student, you would know what a culture means. Like, you actually go in a lab and you make a culture of, you know, microorganisms. So if, if there has to be a culture of shame, it needs three ingredients. Silence, then secrecy, and judgment. We need a lot of empathy so that people who are affected by sex negative culture can come out and can talk about their stories this is where we will raise and sensitize sensitize people so porn addiction is one of the cases then sexually transmitted diseases so i get like for example not many people know that oral herpes is a lifelong condition and it can be transmitted by kissing so there is a class of STDs that is sexually transmitted diseases and infections which can be transmitted by kissing and it is extremely common. Like, you know, STI is something you really cannot prevent. One cannot really prevent. If one is very sexually active and one has had more than one partner, there is a there is a very high chance that one can get contracted. Now, if you get, if one get contracted with oral herpes, which is a lifelong condition, it is something which is, which is very common. It is not life-threatening, but I, I get stories from people who say that, you know, there is so much of stigma around them once they disclose it. So even in the general category of diseases, people having sexually transmitted diseases are seen as something that, you know, you need to kind of just uh, create that uh, discrimination. This is again a consequence, a misconsequence of a sex negative culture. Uh, hookup is seen as something where, you know, I'm not talking about all kinds of hookups, but certain mm -hmm. kinds of hookups where People take hookup as a coping mechanism. They they fear uh, being vulnerable again in a relationship and they say, okay, I just want to have sex and I just want to forget about it. And then, you know, there are many, many stories that I get. This is just a, a snippet of it. So having a sex positive society means that these stories are not really cornered. These stories are not really isolated, but you can come up and you can you can really share. I mean, from a problem point of view. From a renaissance, like the theme is renaissance, future renaissance. So I would say how uh, 
the future should look like is that where it is a sexually healthy society you know uh, sexual crimes aside uh, you know when a when a when a daughter is attaining puberty or when a boy is attaining puberty they should not feel ashamed about their genitals they should not be you know questioning about okay what is happening to my body they should be able to talk freely to their parents or family members about the questions they have when they see a movie like for example my uh, son so he he asked me like uh, uh, you know he asked me about uh, that uh, he saw a certain thing in the movie and said okay how how does the baby come out that was a question okay how does the baby come out and i told him that you know there is a seed in the papa's body there is a seed in the mummy's body and they, these seeds come together and they meet and he asked me how do they come together so i i told him like because he's eight so it's an age appropriate information also so I, like you know they come close and they hug and there is a certain way that their bodies meet and so children are not really interested in the technicalities okay so not and imagine if i if i was not sexually informed i would say like no no don't think about it this wrong why are you asking this these kind of you know uh, weird questions or worst even that you know babies are god's gift or you are we got it from you we got you from hospital or we got you from the temple i mean you are just creating ignorance and shame uh you know in a child's mind because of these uh, answers so the shame is not in the child's mind but the shame is in our mind so we need to really uh you know work on this and that is how by making an effort and having conversations like this is how we are going to break the barrier yeah thank you